The Great Wall of China, the only man-made object that you can see from space. Except that that isn't true. It's pretty hard to see it with the naked eye from space. You can kind of make it out in photos from the International Space Station, but it still looks similar to a road, which you can also see in photos from space. But anyway, it was constructed by the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, and Whoa, that's not totally true either. So what is true? In this video, we are going to give you the real history of the Great Wall of China. Welcome to Learn Chinese Now. My name is Ben and I'm in today for our regular host, Jared. The Great Wall of China in Chinese is called Wanli Changcheng, which literally means 10,000 li, a Chinese unit of measurement, long wall. One li is about half a kilometer. So I guess it should be called the 5,000 kilometer wall. It doesn't really have the same ring to it. And besides, it's not actually 5,000 kilometers or 10,000 li. It's longer than that. It's more like about 6,000 kilometers long. But the number 10,000 or wan in Chinese is often used symbolically to represent a very large number. So back to the history of the Great Wall. The first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, is often credited with the construction of the Great Wall, but there were actually walls existing in the area that is now northern China as far back as the 7th century BC. Several states during China's Warring States period, Chunqiu Jiangguo, built walls to guard against each other as well as sections of wall to the north to protect against nomadic tribes called Xiongnu. These walls were mostly made of rammed earth and stone, not the brick structures that you see Westerners playing around on today. <laughs> it would have been something more like this, but in a better state of repair. When Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor, conquered all of the other states and set up the Qin dynasty, Qin Chao, in 221 BC, he ordered the destruction of wall sections in between the now unified states, but he ordered the construction of a long wall that joined up several previously existing sections of wall in the north to protect against the Xiongnu. The project started in 214 BC and lasted about 10 years, using the labor of thousands of soldiers and conscript workers. In the Han Dynasty, Han Chao, that came directly after the Qin, they strengthened the Qin wall to protect against the Xiongnu and also extended the wall west along the Silk Road in what is now Gansu and Xinjiang provinces. As time went on, each successive dynasty added and repaired sections of the wall until the Tang Dynasty, Tang Chao, when China became so strong militarily that her borders extended beyond the frontier marked by the Great Wall and thus the walls became redundant. That was until the Song Dynasty, Song Chao, a time of military weakness when Chinese forces were forced to retreat to the south side of the Great Wall and in the later southern Song, Nan Song, they retreated further to the south of the Huai River. This meant the entirety of the wall system built by previous dynasties was now inside the territory of the Jin Dynasty or the Great Jin, Da Jin, as they called themselves. A dynasty set up in the north by the Jurchen people. And as you've probably gathered by now, the effectiveness of the Great Wall at keeping out invaders is highly debatable. There are more examples of this to come. During the later Yuan Dynasty, which called itself, yes, you've guessed it, Da Yuan, or the Great Yuan, the Mongolians controlled all of China and formed the largest contiguous land empire in history. The wall served little purpose to them. But as the Yuan Dynasty fell apart, rebellions ravaged across China, and an unlikely commoner rose to become a rebel leader and subsequently the first emperor of the Ming Dynasty, officially the Great Ming, Da Ming, and that was Emperor Taizu. China was finally back under the control of the ethnic Han Chinese and likely wanted to keep it that way. But they got a scare in the year 1449 where Mongols from outside the Great Wall marched into China. Emperor Yingzong personally went with the army to crush the invasion. But it was the Ming forces that were crushed at the Battle of Tumu 
and the emperor was captured. But the Ming didn't pay any ransom to get the emperor back. Instead, they just installed a new one. The Mongols released Emperor Yingzong four years later in exchange for what was apparently quite a lousy trade deal, and he returned to Beijing, but was then forced into seven years of house arrest before finally returning to the throne in a palace coup. But anyway, the whole crisis made the Ming realize that they needed to keep the Mongols out, so they decided to reconstruct the Great Wall. Most of the wall that you can see today was constructed during the reign of the Hongzhi Emperor in the Ming Dynasty. It's made of bricks rather than the rammed earth and stone of previous walls. There are signal towers built on hills where they would use fire at night and smoke signals during the day to communicate with soldiers stationed along the wall. But like we said, the wall was not actually that good at stopping invaders. In 1644, the Ming Dynasty had already fallen to the rebel army of Li Zicheng, who would rule for about a month, because from north of the Great Wall came David Copperfield. No, that was a joke. David Copperfield came through the Great Wall several hundred years later. It was the Manchus that came through the Great Wall. Although they didn't do it using magic like David Copperfield, a Chinese general named Wu Sangui defected and opened the gates at the easternmost section of the Great Wall. Manchu forces stormed into China, establishing the Qing Dynasty, or the Great Qing. Da Qing. The later dynasties all called themselves great. This was another period of alien rule, but nonetheless a period of stability and strength that saw China's territory expand again far beyond the Great Wall. The wall was thus not needed anymore and fell into disrepair until modern times where sections of the wall, notably those close to Beijing, have been restored and you're more likely to bump into a group of Chinese aunties, an American magician, or a French professional skier than a Mongolian army. So there you have it guys, the real history of the Great Wall of China, or Guanli Changcheng. Our regular host Jared will be back in the next video, so subscribe so you don't miss that, and we'll see you next time. Zaijian.